Pat Davin from Grinspoon. Welcome back to Noise11.com. Thanks uh, for having me. With some big news, uh, you know, not only is the band getting back together for a tour, there's also a couple of releases coming out along the way on vinyl for the very first time. On vinyl for the very first time, Paul. That's correct. Well, it seems to be what you do these days, isn't it? Because um, when those two albums were released, there was no thought of releasing it on vinyl. It was still CDs, CDs, CDs. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it, to have something that is 20 years plus, and this will be the debut vinyl release in 2023. I know. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. The two albums we're talking about, uh, Easy and New Detention. Now, when you decide you're going to do something for vinyl, is there a process that you have to go through to sort of uh, rejig the sound so it's going to sound better on a record? Uh, we get it. We get it remastered, obviously, and um, there was a bit of back and forth. Obviously, we get the pe test pressings, which we have a listen to and decide, basically, if they sound as good as uh, they possibly can be. Um, but a bit of back and forth. It's taken a fair bit of time. Uh, it, easy was a lot easier because it was recorded to tape, and it was that old school pre Pro Tools style of recording an album, which was basically made for vinyl, really. Uh, with New Detention, we moved into the digital domain. Uh, recorded That was the first album we recorded on Pro Tools. And so that was a little bit tougher to get the kind of sound that we wanted. But we actually, when we got the vinyls, Phil and I were in a hotel in Sydney and we gave it a gave them a good crack and we're really, really happy with the end result. So uh, we're talking about uh, a tour here uh, called Easy Detention. So we're sort of that, that's right. merging the names well, of the we we did the 20th anniversary tour of Guide to Better Living, obviously, and then that was in 2017. The 20th anniversary was for Easy was 2019, 20, but then obviously COVID hit, and then obviously New Detention was the same, 2002. So we've decided to package them both up and play basically the best of both of those records into um, a 90-minute show. Uh, Phil and I were also, when we were listening to the record, deciding on what songs we were going to play off each album and how we were going to design it, whether we were going to do Easy first, New Detention second, or then mix them both together as a bit of like a um, a mashup, I guess, of both the records. Uh, but we'll wait for the punters to, to see what we've actually got planned for the show. Okay, because uh, now that they're on vinyl, you've actually got a side one and a side two for the very first Correct. time as well. So where where does where does side one end and side two begin on both these albums? Well, you know, to be honest with you, when we were designing them for CD, we actually did think about that. You know what I mean? We actually did think about how they would work as a vinyl. Um, we always kind of thought, oh, well, halfway through, okay, this is the beginning of side B. You know what I mean? Mm. So um, hopefully they will work. Um, you know, I think we'll probably do most of side A of both albums and then a, kind of a smattering of side B. You know what I mean? Yeah, because back in the day then, we also had CD singles, didn't we? But the term, the B-side, still exists yeah. even on a CD single that never had a B-side. No, that's right. And I think we were, we were really into secret tracks with these two records. Yeah. And so even though I think on Easy, the secret track was six minutes and 66 seconds after the final song. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, Ooh. Really, really, I'm there for thinking, exactly. <laughs> um, and on New Detention, I think what we just left a little off. But on the vinyl, they kind of come in straight, straight away. So there's yeah. no waiting around for the secret track. So you do get a little bit of a bonus track on the on the record and yeah. i don't know if you've seen the gatefolds but i think the artwork looks great really transferred really well from both the cd versions uh new detention had two different cd versions we only actually licensed the artwork for the original new detention for a certain amount of copies thinking that we wouldn't sell that many hmm. i think in the end new detention ended up selling about two hundred and fifty thousand copies hmm. so we had to go with another we had to do another photo shoot. We did another album, but the um, another album cover. But on the vinyl, we've got the original New Detention uh, sleeve and gatefold. Because fun fact with Grinspoon, you have never not had a top 10 album. 
No. Well, you would know that more than me. I'm surprised. We're six to midnight, came in in the top ten. I don't know about that, Paul. Possibly. Possibly. Oh, that, oh yeah, def definitely from uh, Better Living to Rabbits, every every single one uh, was a top ten album. That's great. Yeah. It's time, time to buy myself a new car. <laughs> 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 oh, now, now we're just flashing the fanning money around, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Easy had Ready One. That was the hit single off that. New Detention, Chemical Heart, Lost Control. But there was a whole lot of other singles. Yeah. Uh, uh, Secrets, Rock There was. Violence. No uh, Reason. Easy, off uh, Easy, yep. No Reason yep. and Thousand Miles Off New Detention. Uh, it, will this be like a single show? Will every one of the songs that was actually a featured song be part of this show coming up? I, I would say that that's probably a yes to that, Paul. Obviously, um, our song's are quite short, so we're going to need to do at least all the singles and, and some more. It's funny, though, when you talk about those two records, we did Guide to Better Living, which was kind of like a, our obviously our de debut album, and it was um, far more successful than what anyone kind of expected it to be at, at the record company at the time and all that kind of stuff. Uh, then we released Easy, which was kind of a fan favourite, I guess. Like our core fan base really liked that record, but it didn't sell nearly as well as Guide to Better Living. Um, we kind of pushed it for singles. Um, I think we might have had three, but to be honest with you, the album didn't meet expectations as far as the record company was concerned, and uh, we probably didn't push the album as far as we did. Interestingly, though, we released New Detention, which I think was our biggest ever selling record as our third record. And then obviously the record company were of the opinion that we're back. And so the singles kept flowing. And I think we had five singles off that record. But to answer your question directly, uh, I would imagine that, yes, we're going to play all the singles and, um, and a smattering of everything else. Can I uh, quote a wise old man from the 20th century who first picked up his microphone way back 30 years ago, some man called Phil, who said, <laughs> and, and I quote from your press release. Yeah. I don't know if I'm doing the the, uh, the accent right, but here we go. We're delighted to be hitting the road again later this year. I've been enjoying putting together the set list for these shows. We'll be throwing in some songs we've never played live, believe it or not. Yeah, that's true. But tell me about the never played live songs. What are you looking at? Well, I mean, just straight off the bat, there's a song called Dial Tone, which is off easy, which was a definitely a, we loved recording the album, but we could never do it justice live. Who knows if we're going to be able to do it uh, justice live. Off um, New Detention, I think we'll probably be playing Make It Happen, which is a ball terror of a song. Mm. Um, but with lots and lots of overlaid guitar tracks, a real Phil McKellar special when we were putting that one together. And there's also Kill Switch, I think, of New Detention, which we had Dave from the Baby Animals came in and played the guitar solo on it. And we've never been able to play that one live because he just shredded all over it and we couldn't do it justice. Maybe we'll get him up on the tour to as our special guest to, to play the song with us. Um, so, yeah, but there's a few in there, Paul. We've actually got a few to choose from that we never played live. I'm going to put you on the spot here, Pat. <laughs> he, he's not answering. Oh, Dave Lezzo. <laughs> he's not answering the phone. Ah, oh, there you go. He's missed his oh. chance to be in your band. Yeah, now I was thinking about Dave the other day, actually, and I was thinking about that song. I'm not sure how that all came about. I think maybe we'd been on tour, not with the Baby Animals, but with another band that he was playing in, and then we we became mates, and then... We decided to get him to play on the record. There hasn't been a uh, Grinspoon album uh, in more than a decade. Uh, we've no. had, I, I can't even keep track of how many prime ministers we've had since you've had your last. Yeah, that's right. Will there ever yeah. be another Grinspoon album? Uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about that, Paul. Oh, well, I'll take that as a yes then. <laughs> <laughs> the, there's space. only two answers to that question <laughs> no, or I can't talk about it. <laughs> Watch this space. That's what we always say, though. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. Could well be. You never yeah. know. You never yeah. know. I mean, really, we've got to weigh up whether there's an appetite for new Grinspoon music. I think at the end of the day, it would be an album that we would do for our own enjoyment and to do a club tour, really. Mm. Um, that's probably something that we're feeling more and more like we would like to do. We have a Dropbox. Um, the band has a Dropbox, which we put songs in that we write that we feel would be good for a Grinspoon record. Uh, that Dropbox is pretty full, 
So it would just take someone to come along and say, you know what, uh, here are some songs. You've got a good album there. Let's do it. Would you like to produce it, Paul? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm just thinking of going back to 1997, Guide to Better Living. Uh, something that never would have been said during those sessions is, we have a drop box and our drop box is full. <laughs> Very true. Back yeah. then we had a tape recorder. Uh, <laughs> I had one of those cassette things that I used to take into my rehe our rehearsal room with me and um, and record riffs. And, you know, that's kind of what how the songs took form. Yeah. Very different these days. It was probably, you know, it was probably better those days rather than having a Pro Tools rig in your own house where you go to town putting layers and layers of different things on there. It was uh, definitely a lot rawer than what it is now. Okay, so we've got a whole stack of dates for uh, easy detention, sort of kicking off on the Gold Coast at the end of October and uh, all the way through to the end of November. And then uh, you can take the family back to Bali. Well, hopefully, or maybe I'll get back on the road with BF. You never know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, BF. I get I get a hard time. I get a hard time from my bandmates over my extracurricular musical activities, and uh, this one is probably the one that's given them the most joy. But I like when we sound check with Grinspoon. I like to say, "Yeah, this is almost as good as my real band." <laughs> <laughs> I think you should be slipping a few Powderfinger songs into your Grinspoon. Oh, I mean, you know yeah, them now. If I talk to my 25-year-old self that I would be playing Powderfinger songs in at my, the age I am now, I would have said, you're, you're kidding yourself. But I am, and I enjoy it. Don't worry. Yeah. Well, hopefully Bernard will uh, start throwing in a few Grinspoons as well. Ah, he tries. He, he <laughs> has tried that one. I get some very funny introductions on stage some nights. Don't worry about that. I'd, I'd, pretty, I'd, I'd like to hear a fanning dead cat three times. Well, that's the one he always kind of quotes. I think that's the only Grinspoon song he knows. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No doubt that'll be in the set list. No, it won't be in the set list, Paul, unfortunately. It may be. If we get drawn on stage for an encore, then Dead Cat could possibly get out. But to be honest with you, at the moment, we're just concentrating on our um, easy and new detention. Well, I'll uh, make sure I come along and heckle. Yeah, please do. <laughs> <laughs>